Good evening, gardeners. It's Monday, April 5th, and it's a gorgeous evening here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And today I want to confront and dispel the top two garden myths that I keep hearing repeated on the internet. I've been making these YouTube videos for a little bit over three years now, and since I've been making them, I tend to see a lot of the same comments and a lot of the same myths spread. And by far, the number one myth that I tend to see spread is that using pressure-treated wood to make your raised garden beds is somehow harmful. And I think the challenge with dispelling this myth is it is because it is rooted in truth. As you can see, I have a whole lot of raised beds in my garden. So I had to very carefully plan out my raised beds and how I was going to build them because it was going to cost a lot of money to buy all of this lumber. So I had to carefully determine the type of wood that I was going to use to build my raised bed. Now there are some legitimate reasons to not want to use pressure treated lumber to build your raised beds. Now because we want good drainage in our raised beds, we want to build them minimum out of two by eights. So when I went to Lowe's to buy my lumber, I have essentially two options to buy uh, two by eights, and that is pressure treated lumber or untreated white pine. Untreated white pine is completely out of the question because it will only last a season or two. It will rot upon ground contact. You have to use rot resistant lumber when they are contacting the ground or they will fall apart on you in no time flat. So pressure treated wood is the only option to use when you buy from big box stores. Now let me say, if I were to walk into Lowe's and right next to the pressure treated 2x8s, they also had 2x8s of redwood, cedar, and cypress, I would happily go with the redwood, cedar, and cypress if they were readily available and for roughly the same price. Redwood, cedar, and cypress are all naturally rot resistant woods, so they're actually a really good option to, uh, to make a raised bed out of. However, the reason why I choose them over pressure treated wood has nothing to do with the chemicals. It's because pressure treated wood soaks in a preservative solution. So when you buy it, it's generally sopping soaking wet. So that makes it very heavy. It makes it difficult to cut because it splinters often because it's so wet when you cut it. And the other thing is it has a tendency to warp. So dealing with the cypress or the cedar or the redwood, the lumber is much lighter, it cuts much cleaner, and you have a reduced chance of your raised beds warping on you. So that's a really good reason to not want to use pressure treated wood. However, the reason why most people don't want to use pressure treated lumber in their garden is because they think that the chemical preservative is somehow going to harm the food or harm the soil biology. And like I said earlier, this is one of those myths that is rooted in truth. Many years ago, residential pressure treated lumber was commonly CCA treated, which stands for chromated copper arsenate. And the arsenate in there is arsenic. And arsenic is a very toxic chemical. You don't want to use arsenic anywhere near your garden or anywhere near food or water supply. Today's CCA treatment is basically relegated to marine applications and it's commonly used to treat wood utility poles. It's not used anymore in residential lumber. Today's residential pressure treated lumber is copper azole treated. Here you can see MCA right here. MCA stands for micronized copper azole. It does not contain arsenic anymore and copper azole preservative is actually non-toxic. And I know what you might be thinking, who says it's non-toxic? The companies that make it, can we really trust them? Well, I want you to know that copper is a certified organic fungicide. You can go out and you can buy liquid copper concentrate, certified organic, and you can spray it all over directly on top of your vegetables. So if you've ever purchased organic produce before, there's a good chance that it may have been coated in a copper fungicide, direct contact onto the fruit itself. And I think that this all boils down to confusion over the word toxicity. Toxicity is in the dose. Nothing is toxic if the concentration is low enough and everything is toxic if the concentration is too high. Too much oxygen will kill you. Too much water will kill you. Too much sunshine will kill you. They are all toxic if you take in too much at once, but try to live without it and see how well that goes for you. So what we need to do is we need to break everything down to the toxicity of the dose. Arsenic has a very low threshold for toxicity. It does not take much arsenic at all to poison life. Copper, on the other hand, life can tolerate a lot of 
of copper in general before it becomes problematic. That's why we like the copper azole treatment. It takes extremely high concentrations of copper in order for things to be a problem. Now, I know what you might be thinking next. If I dig in my soil, in my raised garden beds, and I take a soil sample, right up against this pressure treated lumber. Is there going to be elevated levels of copper there? And the answer is almost certainly going to be yes. The, there will be elevated levels of copper right here compared to right here in the center of my raised bed. But it doesn't matter if that is not a problem. These soil tests are inherently dangerous because when you get a soil sample, you're not necessarily understanding whether the threshold of certain minerals in your soil are a problem. The other thing is just because there is elevated levels of the copper azole treatment in your soil, it doesn't mean it's making it into the plants. If I go out and I order a pizza and I eat that pizza, none of my body turns into pizza. That's not the way biology works. We don't assimilate things like that. We assimilate the raw materials. We have to break them down. So just because there's, there's some kind of preservative in the soil, it doesn't mean that it's bioavailable for the plants to uptake it and that it'll work its way into the tissues of the plant. Is it possible that there is some marginal level higher copper inside my plants because I'm using pressure treated lumber? It's entirely possible. However, those concentrations don't matter and I can prove it. The reason why I know for a fact that there is nothing harmful in my soil from using pressure treated lumber is because every single thing in my garden is thriving. Look at everything here. Everything is incredibly healthy. It all looks beautiful. There is not one hint of disease. None of these plants are sad. None of them are drooping. Everything in my garden looks amazing and it's looked great season after season despite using pressure treated lumber to build my raised beds. If the pressure treated lumber was having any negative effect on my soil and all my plants, the plants would be showing it. They would be sick, but because they are healthy and thriving, that means by definition, my soil cannot have anything toxic in it in any measurable quantity that matters. If your plants are thriving and healthy, they are not poisoned. So that means that they cannot poison you by uptaking anything from the soil. Remember, your human bodies have two kidneys and a liver that is constantly detoxifying your body. The amount of any kind of toxin that is going to be required to make you sick is orders of magnitude higher than what is necessary to make these plants sick. You're constantly filtering out and disposing of toxins. Your plants don't do a very good job of that. So if this soil is so negligible in this pressure treated chemical that it doesn't even harm them, there is no way that these plants can store up enough of any kind of toxic chemical to make you sick. It is just not possible. The toxicity is in the dose and it's going to have to be a hundred or a thousand times more potent to hurt you than these plants and if these plants are doing great you're going to do great in my view the thing that you really need to avoid when you buy produce is any kind of chemical sprays like pesticides on the produce itself because you're taking concentrated pesticides and you're spraying it all over the plants if you eat that over the years those toxins really can build up in your body and there's actual science that shows that however the idea that there's some kind of chemical leaching into my soil that's going to make me sick that's absolute bunk there's no science that shows that anywhere with pressure treated lumber if i already used galvanized raised beds i'd have galvanic metals of some detectable quantity in my soil if i already used plastic there'd be plastics detectable but at the end of the day it doesn't matter if your plants are thriving they cannot hurt you so as I explained, there are some really good reasons to want to use natural rot resistant woods like redwood cedar and cypress to build your raised beds however the cost is absolutely astronomical these woods are not readily available so you're going to have to more than likely custom order them and they're going to cost many times the cost of pressure treated lumber and have you seen the cost of lumber lately the costs are completely out of control regular cheap pressure treated lumber has skyrocketed so can you imagine how much it costs to get naturally rot resistant wood that you're going to have to custom order i wouldn't be surprised if this one raised bed would cost one to two hundred dollars to make and that cost is just ridiculous so one of the best arguments for using pressure treated lumber is the cost argument 
The second myth that I want to tackle and dispel is that the use of these soluble synthetic fertilizers is somehow harmful to your soil, to your plants, and to your health. I've been using these synthetic soluble fertilizers uh, in my garden for many years, for as long as I've been gardening, and I've never had anything but great success with them. They really are powerful, strong fertilizers, and they really help produce tremendous yields in plants like tomatoes and peppers and other finicky fruiting plants. I've had incredible success using these synthetic soluble fertilizers on my container fig trees, Anything that is a very heavy feeder, like cucumbers and zucchini and pumpkins, the synthetic soluble fertilizers work wonders. However, a lot of people are nervous to use them in their garden. I first want to say that there are some really great logical reasons to not want to use these synthetic fertilizers in your garden. The first reason is that you simply don't like the companies that are making them. A lot of people take issue with the miracle Grow brand. They don't like the ethics of the company. That is a great reason to not buy this product. If you do not like the company that makes it, please buy it from another company. There are other companies out there like Job's or Jack's that make synthetic fertilizers that you may think are uh, more environmentally friendly. Maybe they have better processes in place. Uh, I buy this just because it's the cheapest and it's the, red, uh, it's the most readily available. I can pick it up at any store, so it's easy and convenient for me. I have no allegiance to this brand. I don't also necessarily have any issues with it ethically. Another reason to not buy these synthetic soluble fertilizers is because you want to label your plants organic. You can't use synthetic fertilizers like this and label them organic. They do have to be organic certified fer uh, fertilizers. The good news is companies like this do make organic soluble fertilizers. miracle Grow even has its own brand. So you could buy the organic miracle Grow, and you'll still be able to go ahead and label your plants organic. And another thing is maybe you just don't need them. Maybe you have really fertile soil and you, or you have a great local source of compost and you get it for cheap or even for free and you just don't need to spend the extra time and cost on these fertilizers. And if you have success like that, more power to you. I have very sandy soil and it rains a lot here, so I find that I need to fertilize much more heavily than most people. But a very poor reason to not use these is because you think that using them is somehow going to make your plants or you sick. There's no science behind that at all. I think people get hung up on the word chemical. They associate these as chemical fertilizers, but all fertilizers are chemicals. If I were to buy the organic version of this, they're just making the nitrogen out of, uh, out of blood meal instead of urea, but they're still processing it just the same. They're just as heavily processed. It's just what was the raw material that went into this. There's still chemicals at the end of the day. If I were to go out and buy organic granules, once again, they are still chemically processed. So no matter what you're doing, if you're using some type of fertilizer, sans natural compost and mulch, you are buying some type of chemical product. But again, no matter how you want to label these fertilizers, they are not harmful for the same reason that these pressure treated boards that I'm using are not harmful. With the same logic as I just gave you for the pressure treated lumber, if these fertilizers were making my plants somehow toxic, if they were putting toxic chemicals inside the fruits, the plants themselves would be sick. But because the plants themselves actually thrive and grow like weeds when I give them of this soluble fertilizer, what that actually proves is that I'm actually increasing the nutrient content of that plant. The overabundance of nutrients actually makes the plant bigger, healthier. It makes the fruit more nutritious, actually, because the more nutrition you give to the plant, the higher quality the fruit you're going to get, the more nutritious that fruit is going to be. If I were somehow making this plant ill by giving it these fertilizers, the plant itself would be sick. The fruit itself cannot be toxic off of a plant that is healthy because if I were somehow putting some kind of harmful toxin inside that fruit by feeding my plants this type of fertilizer, the plant itself would be going into decline. We know that's not happening because every single plant that I give it to is thriving. The other concerns that I've seen from people about these synthetic soluble fertilizers is that over time, if you keep using these fertilizers, salts will build up in your soil and that will eventually harm your soil. And I think this is a much more legitimate claim. 
these fertilizers do break down into salt. So over time, you could have salts accumulate in your soil in theory. However, I think this is more theoretical than actually found in practice. And the reason why is because the earth is not a closed loop system. Every time you irrigate or it rains, you're flushing the salts out of the soil. So here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, we get 60 to 100 inches of rain every single year. So my soils are being constantly flushed out. So there's really no risk at all of any kind of salt buildup in my soil. If you live in a place that's more arid, especially in the desert southwest of the United States where the soil tends to be salty to begin with, since it used to be an ancient ocean, uh, there may be more problems associated with using these chemical fertilizers. However, I think this is a problem that orchard growers tend to have more. And uh, I think that's because when you're growing an orchard, the plants never move. Whereas with garden beds, you tend to give them a rest. And when you give your garden beds a rest, you get the, the natural rain cycles even out in the desert. And uh, over time, those salts tend to dissipate. So if you're anywhere on the eastern half of the country where it tends to be pretty rainy, uh, there's really no risk of this because your soil is being constantly flushed. And um, most of the United States, uh, the growing season isn't all that long. So chances are your beds are going through long periods where they're not being used and that soil is going to continue to flush out. So I don't think that salt accumulation is really that big of a deal. So hopefully I did a pretty good job trying to tackle some of these myths and I hope that I clarified things in a way that made sense so you're not so afraid about these common myths that are spread on the internet in regards to gardening. The purpose of this video isn't to ruffle any feathers, it's just to give my perspective. It's why I don't think any of these things are harmful. Again, there are completely legitimate reasons that I tried to cover why you don't want to use things like soluble synthetic fertilizers and pressure treated lumber in your garden. And if you fall under those uh, those categories I invite you to do whatever you think is best I also invite you to do your own research if you disagree with me this is my view on the situation and it is why I do the things that I do and I hope that will wind up being informative for some of you so if you found this video helpful as always please hit that like button and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these if you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden they're all linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description Thank you all again so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. He's all woofed out. He's woofed out. That was so much fun, Giddy. <laughs>